Last Night in Soho is a film that seems to do everything it can to avoid exposition. The only exposition we do get is the little we learn about our main character, and all that we really know about her is her past with her mother, but that doesn't really pay off in any meaningful way. However, where the film's lack of exposition hurts the most is in how it explains its main plot device, the protagonist Eloise's ability to travel into the 1960s and inhabit the body of another woman. The film's writer-director Edgar Wright seems to make a conscious choice not to explain the details surrounding the character's ability, such as how she came to have them and the specific ways in which they work. The only details we are given is that she has had them for presumably her entire life and seems to have a good grasp on how to use them, but both of these happen off screen. Seeing as this main character has a lot more information about this ability than we as an audience do, Wright runs the risk of detaching the audience from this part of the narrative. The reason for this detachment is that the film spends no time on exposition. Beyond any kind of explanation, the abilities in the film also have no consistency to them. Wright seems to establish that she can only inhabit the bodies of dead people, but the Mrs Collins and Lindsay reveals completely go against that. The character seems to go from inhabiting Sandy's body, to standing alongside her, to only being able to view her through the nearest mirror. And in a scene when Eloise breaks through one of those mirrors, she simply wakes up and we get no further explanation as to how she was able to do that and it plays no further role in the narrative. There is no consistency here, no rhyme or reason to these time shifts, and the lack of an explanation doesn't add to the mystery or horror elements through omitting these details, it just makes the plot device as a whole feel inconsistent and in many ways frustrating. What the film needed was a lot more exposition. Masterclass, an organisation that's hosted legends such as Martin Scorsese, Ron Howard and Adam Sorkin, define exposition as something that is designed to convey information that provides insight into a character or advances the story. The background information provided by this exposition helps to connect the reader, or in this case the viewer, to the emotional stakes of the narrative. Nailing the exposition of the story is often one of the trickiest tightropes to walk for a writer. Provide too little of a character's backstory or background details and the reader will become confused, but write too much and the reader will become bored. So maybe Edgar Wright didn't want to overwhelm his audience with this information and that's understandable. But since he spends no time on it whatsoever, his issues lie in the opposite direction. Since the film doesn't devote any exposition to explaining its time travel plot device, every time it's used, it doesn't feel consistent and is in many ways confusing. Other films like Last Night in Soho understand the importance of exposition, especially when what they are presenting is original material. Take a film like Christopher Nolan's Inception, a film that devotes almost half its runtime to exposition. While this could have ran the risk of overwhelming the audience, Nolan wisely structures Inception as a heist film. So not only does the audience need to understand this information that is being conveyed, but it also makes sense within the context of the narrative that the characters would be going over these details. In this case, the dream technology Inception is based around. While the main character is very knowledgeable of the dream technology, Nolan wisely inserts characters into the film who are new to it, namely Elliot Page's character Ariadne, who acts as a surrogate for the audience. Edgar Wright felt like he was trying to do this with the John character in Last Night in Soho, but that didn't end up coming to pass, and the character asks no question and blindly goes along with everything with no explanation whatsoever. But beyond dialogue, no one also offers interesting and unique visuals that allow the exposition to stick out in the audience's mind more. He also uses this exposition to establish the dangers the characters face should something go wrong. So when they enter someone else's dreams, not only do we understand the mechanics of the dreams, but also the stakes for the main character. No one understands the need for exposition. Deception isn't a reboot or a sequel. It's his own original property, and as such, it's our introduction to the concepts he's presenting. And therefore, he has to break it down for the audience in a way that is digestible. In Inception, I understand the threats the characters are facing. I understand the rules of the technology he's presenting. And as such, I have a much better grasp of what's going on in the situations he's presenting than I am in something like Last Night in Soho. But it's understandable why the idea of devoting half of his film to exposition might not have been appealing to Wright. But that wasn't the only option at his disposal.
Take a film like Midnight in Paris, something Last Night in Soho has often been compared to. Both films take place in distinctive locations, have distant protagonists that are in love with the past and eventually get to go back to that past through time travel. Midnight in Paris isn't a film that spends a lot of time going over its own time travel mechanic, but it does it just enough to make it comprehensible to the audience. We see protagonist Gil stumble across the car that takes him back to the 20s, so we know that's what he needs to get back to the past. In another scene, we see him waiting around with his wife for the car, but she eventually gets bored and leaves. And director Woody Allen makes a point of showing that the car doesn't arrive till after midnight. So in these two short scenes, we know how the mechanics work and the exact circumstances the character needs in order to access it. Allen also throws in one more scene of Gil travelling back into the past through the car, just for good measure. After seeing this character use this ability three times, it's burned into the audience's brain. Another reason this exposition works is that, unlike in Last Night in Soho, the character discovers these abilities within the time frame of the film. We discover it at the same time the character does. I don't think original films like Last Night in Soho necessarily need to be inundated with exposition, but some is preferable to none, even if it can sometimes feel forced. For example, in Looper, director Ryan Johnson arguably uses the laziest means of exposition, narration. In the film's Hope Night, the main character commits the time travel murder that the narrative is built around. And as he is doing it and going about the ritual, Johnson uses narration to explain what he's doing as well as why and the rules surrounding this movie's use of time travel. It's not the most inventive or creative way to deliver information, but it does show that Johnson has a fundamental understanding of the need for exposition. However, to Johnson's credit, he does have a very effective scene where a character is brutally murdered in order to catch his future counterpart. As well as telling us a very key piece of information about the time travel logic in this film, it also sets up an important piece of the film's emotional climax. Exposition is an important screenwriting tool. It has to be used in the correct manner for what suits the film. But in the case of Last Night in Soho, I don't think Edgar Wright understood the need for and the importance of exposition and the kind of storytelling he was presenting. There is definitely such a thing as too much exposition in a film, and that causes its own issues, but that doesn't automatically justify a lack of it. Maybe Edgar Wright didn't intend the time travel in his film to make sense. Perhaps he thought that would add to the horror and mystery elements. But for me, it just left me confused in a bad way. In looking at Wright's previous films, Hot Fuzz and The World's End, he took the opening of those films to set up everything we needed to know about those main characters. So it's a bit baffling for me that he chose to purposely omit so much information here. Exposition can be tricky to execute properly, but it is important for a reason. Many of the methods I've mentioned here are cliché, but they undeniably work. I generally applaud and love Wright as a director for his creative choices, but this lack of exposition in Last Night in Soho as a whole represents a bit of a misfire for him, with it receiving some of the weakest reviews of his career to date. I'm hopeful that in future he can put some of that creativity into his expository scenes.